Hello, my name is Tom Walski from Bentley Systems. I'm going to be talking today about SCADA data and some of the ways we have of visualizing it inside a hydraulic model like water gems or water cat or sewer gems. Uh, today's talk is going to be about an, one specific method we have for using this kind of data called time series field data, where you can take data from basically any kind of a file, whether it's a database file or a spreadsheet file, and basically paste it into water gems and be able to look at that kind of field data and compare it with the model. Okay, so we have really several ways of moving data between a, a SCADA system and water gems or water CAD. Uh, from the control room, we could, we could use uh, observed data, which I talked about in my previous presentation. We're going to, we can move them using time series field data, which is the current presentation. And we have another one coming up talking about our SCADA connect element. So now we'll move out of there and actually get into the demonstration itself. Okay, we're going back to the simple uh, system we had earlier, which is uh, not very, very cluttered. We have SCADA signals coming in on the suction and discharge side of the pump and a flow at the pump and a water level up here at the tank. So that, that's essentially our system, a real uh, simple one. And we have uh, data from the SCADA system on this. So let's look at the kind of fields we'd be interested in. We need to know what the property is that we're uh, plotting, we usually call tags in the SCADA system, what the numerical value is. This has come in from the SCADA system. It's in the usually the OPC server, and it's downloaded to some kind of file, whether it's a spreadsheet or database. And then we look at the date and time stamp of this data. So that's what's of interest to us, so the date and time, uh, the numerical value, and what property. In this particular file, we have dates on the pump station flow data. We have thousands of values. We have data on uh, inlet pressures to the pump station. Uh, outlet pressures, and then at the end we have tank levels of the, the tank that the pump station is pumping to. So this is what our data looks like. So how do we get this into water gems so we can visualize it on the same graph uh, as the, uh, the water data, or look at tabular comparisons between this data and the model results? Okay. So the way we do this is to go to Components, Time Series Field Data. And this is the dialog that opens. And we see every different type of model element here. So what we're doing now is creating a place to store these results. And the thing that's different about this than the previous one is that this is storing this data as a, a support element. It's something that's going to be available when you open up new graphs and even open up different models uh, of this system. But in particular, this particular model, as part, or I should say different scenarios of this system, this data will be available. Okay, what does the data look like? Well, in general, let's take that tank data and we get, it looks something like this. There's usually some uh, associated start date time so we can line it up with the model, the element that we're associated with, the, the units come in by default, and then we have all our numerical values here. You can, uh, you know, insert new values, you can delete values from it, and you also have the ability with this one to just draw a graph and just check on the data. What did the tank levels do during our uh, period here? So that, that's what the tank data level data look like in this particular system. And this was based on actual real data. Now if you're creating a new one from scratch, let's say we have, we have one here now for pumps already, let's say we want to create a new one, uh, we would go to pumps and we'd pick a, we just could right click, add, and we're going to add a new property. Let's just say uh, pressure discharge. It's going to be our new property. And we can go out and say, okay, which element, uh, which pump element do we want to go to? So we'd go to the ellipse button here and pick the only pump in our system. So that was pretty easy. And there it is. And then I would go out to the data source and I would usually use copy paste, to copy and paste the values in from the original data source to this model. Now notice this is saved as time from start. So we need to have the fields identified relative to time from start, not the date and time format. We will be able to get that when we uh, get into the actual graph. So this is how we, we create this data and make this association and fill these uh, tables up with the actual data that came in from the SCADA system. So I close out of here now and we say, well, how, does, how do we get this to work? Well, let's take a look uh, at the pump data. And this time we'll do a graph of the pump flow is what we're looking for. Okay, And now since I set this graph up earlier, uh, we see that it has the 
values uh, in date time format. This is usually a lot more useful for model calibration or, data, or studies of historical events to actually have the data in this format rather than time from start. So I set that up in the graph itself that I wanted to use that time format. So how do I get at the, the SCADA data I have? Well, I would go up here and to graph series options. Notice I'm not going to observe data. That was the other way to approach this. We're going to graph series options. And we see down here that we have time series field data as a possible field that we can graph. So I can go in here and I can grab pressure, which but I didn't copy paste those values and I copy pasted the flow values. So I'll say, okay. And there's our comparison between uh, pressure data or flow data and the data from the model. Now I could also go in and uh, look at another uh, graph, which is minimize this one. I'll go in, let's say, look at the tank graph and do the same thing. Now I hit graph. I don't even have to look at the graph the first time. I can just go right directly to level, which was the property I'm looking at, and graph this. And it looks odd. What happened here? What did we do wrong? Well, if we go back and look at what we did, we were plotting level here versus hydraulic grade line two different properties, well, different to the datum that I was using. So I'll get rid of hydraulic grade line and convert that to level. And by doing so, I see that I have a reasonable uh, agreement here of the tank levels going up and down. It's really hard to get uh, time shifts exactly right. Usually, the um, while the, the, the absolute values or the numerical values look pretty good, uh, times are going to change because if your model was done assuming one particular pattern for a day and no two days are ever exactly alike, you're going to have pumps coming out at slightly different times. And that's what you see in these little time shifts that we have here. But overall, the model looks uh, pretty good as far as comparing it with the field data in this particular case. Now, once you've done this, you've got access to all of the, the tools we have for editing graphs. So we go back up here, and of course, you may want to add this to Graph Manager by just doing a save. You may want to add additional elements. For example, if we wanted to uh, plot both the pump data and the uh, data from the uh, tank on the same graph, we can do that. Go to Pump here and scroll down to Time Series Field Data for Flow. We see you can have the pump data and the uh, data from the tank levels together. And we see how they agree and what, what conditions exist when they disagree. So this is a, a pretty powerful tool to use, very useful for model calibration studies. Okay, so, and then what happens is it opens up to you all kind of other options, such as the ability to copy this graph and paste it into this uh, report or into a, uh, some a presentation you're doing. You can do a print preview and print it. We're going to focus here for a little while on some of the chart options because we've got a lot of ability that I think a lot of our users don't realize of what you can do with our chart options as far as controlling uh, what things look like on the graphs. For example, we could say, well, I've got this uh, property here called level calculated. And I'll go into that series and I'll say, well, you know those points we have? They're awfully big points. I'm, I'm going to want them to be, let's say, circular points, and I want them to be a good bit smaller because they're getting kind of in the way. So I do that, and now I have you know, smaller data points, if that's what you're looking for. Um, you, can, you can do all sorts of things like this in our uh, chart options. Chart options give you ability to label the graphs differently, uh, set background colors, and things of that sort, which now for the most part, you're not going to probably mess with too much. But who knows? You may want to pick a different color background, for example, to make things stand out a little better. So it should have uh, come up as uh, background. Let's see. Nothing changed. I wonder what I did there. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, you have a lot of abilities to edit things like this. You can export this graph out. You can export as a bitmap, JPEG, PNG file. You can also uh, you know, you know, uh, save it as one of these other file formats or copy it somewhere. So you've got a lot of tools for printing this or just viewing the data within that, the model. So you can do a, a, a look at the data, say, do I really believe in this data? Uh, you can also go to the data tab and you can visualize the numerical values here in our data tab as well. So there's a lot of capabilities with uh, you know, tanks, time, ser or time series field data import. 
Now, uh, we have another way yet that I'll do, in the, I'll talk about in the next presentation, uh, using SCADA elements to, to accomplish this task as well. So we have a lot of ways to get data between the SCADA system and the model, and I want you to be aware of them so you can take advantage of them.